Hi, it's Rich from Racing Profits Guides and I just wanted to do a quick video for you looking at the Grand National course, um, looking at the four and a half mile course, the 30 fences that the horses have to tackle and why it's such a stamina test still and even though they've made the fences easier over the years, made the whole race safer for jockey and for horse, uh, it's still rightly holds its uh, place as the world's greatest steeplechase. Uh, it really is a stamina test, four and a half miles as I say, 30 fences to negotiate in the two circuits round the Aintree track. And I thought it'd be useful just to have a look at some of the key fences and some of the key places where some of the accidents happen in the race and why it's still such a great course. So let's get started. Now obviously the horses start the race um, up at the Melling Road, uh, just before the Melling Road, you can see here the starter line, they go across the Melling Road and they come to the first fence. Now speed is critical here, it's quite a small fence, four foot six high, so it's not the biggest of the fences but it usually the problems here are all the horses being overexcited and they end up galloping towards, um, towards that fence at such a pace that accidents happen as they land, it's the first real test for them. Now the third fence here, fence three, this is actually an open ditch, you'll just see as we go past it, uh, it's got a ditch in front of it, um, so it's the first open ditch they come to, and then they go over a plain fourth and fifth, and then they come towards the first major test of the race on this uh, left hand bend here, which is Beecher's Brook. Now the big thing about Beecher's, as most people know who've uh, watched the National over the years, is the drop on this side. It's a fairly high takeoff, four foot ten inches, so just under the five foot uh, high fence on the takeoff side. But on the landing side, it actually drops by nearly seven foot. So a real steep descent, and this is what causes the problems here. It's also left turning as well, so the horses are also trying to um, turn left uh, when they land. So there's all sorts of problems can be um, can happen here at beaches because of this uneven takeoff and landing for horses. Now they take this fence twice, it's fence 6 and fence 22. So again they've got this, uh, this fence to negotiate twice and certainly on the second time round when they're all getting tired it can cause even more mayhem. So have a quick look at beaches. They have filled in as you can see there, they've filled in the, the, the brook that was on the other side, there was like a ditch on the other side. Now they come sweeping round here towards the canal turn. Now the big thing about the canal turn is obviously it's a big fence at five foot high but then they turn 90 degrees down here. So they're going to be landing, the horses are landing and a lot of them what they'll do is come out wide here and cut this corner. You'll see them come over this corner at an angle so that they're landing and going in towards, um, towards the next fence which is Valentine's Brook just ahead here. But uh, the big, the tricky thing here obviously is this 90 degree, as you can see on the map down here, it's a 90 degree bend here. And what a lot of the jockeys will do is come out wide and then cut, certainly on the second circuit, you'll see a lot of them cut, cut this corner um, to get a good sighter ready for Valentine's Brook ahead. Um, so we'll just sweep round here and then down the back side here over fence nine again this is Valentine's Brook as you can see there's a two foot uh, brook on this side of it and it's another five foot high so another fairly tall fence um, with the ditch on the other side of it a two foot wide ditch to clear on the other side of it and again they clear that fence twice Fence 10, fence 11, 12, these are all fairly plain fences. Now they come swinging round this left hand bend towards fence 13, 14, and then they approach the chair here. Now the chair, you can see here, it's to the left. They actually, when they finish the race here, they come round here and race down. So they only actually take the chair once. They jump the chair once and they also jump the next fence which is fence 16, the water jump once. All the other fences uh, on the on the circuit they do twice or they jump twice. Now what makes the chair so difficult is this ditch at the front. If you look here you can see it's a six foot gap um, that the horses have to jump before they even reach the back of the fence and then they have to clear this fence here. 
that's what makes the chair such a difficult uh, fence and it obviously explains why they don't do it on the second circuit because tired horses there it would be carnage for them. They then come up to the water jump, which again is only only taken once um, because on the second circuit they're actually coming down the inside of this rail here running towards the finish line. Um, so they miss the chair and the water jump as I say and that's why you get the elbow that they, that they run past and why there's such a long run from the last fence to the finish line. I think it's 494 yard run from the last fence uh, towards the line. Um, and the elbow is about halfway down that running. So that's the full circuit. We're back to the start here. You can see they're starting just in front of the Melling Road, as I say, and then they gallop down towards the first fence there. And then you can see them all going off into the distance. So that's a good overview of the course itself. And then they're going round again, round for the second circuit now, coming around. over that last fence and then once they clear that they come to the elbow here where they go past Beaches Brook and there's a 494 yards I say running um, and you do see tired horses getting caught here and um, I remember a, a year ago or a couple of years ago a uh, sunny hill boy got to the elbow, looked like he'd won the race and he got caught uh, literally on the line. So the race can still change even when they get to here after clearing 30, 30 fences. Um, there can still be two or three horses in it. And then they come down towards the finish line and pass the post into history. <laughs>